The question now is that this bill be now read a second time. I'll put the question. All of those of opinion say aye. Against no. I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. Lock the doors. Lock the doors immediately. No, lock the doors. Those members will need to return to the chamber immediately. Was it, no, it was one minute. The
Order. The result of the division is eyes 96, noes 5. Before we go any further, I wish to call the Leader of the House. I want absolute silence for this. Um, Mr Speaker, I am not in a position to name individual members of parliament, um, but we as a House cannot be in a situation out of respect for the staff who work in this building where when you ask people to lock the doors, they have members of parliament physically pushing past them to get out of the room. Um, there are standing orders that are quite specific uh, in terms of people's obligation once you say lock the doors that at that moment people have to move to their seats and pick a side or do as some members did and take the advisers' boxes quite appropriately. But regardless of practice and standing orders, we cannot be in a position as a House where people are using their physical size to push past the members of staff after you have said lock the doors. It would be appreciated if you could review the video. It would also be appreciated if the members involved reported directly to you so that you could work out what the appropriate action is. I shall be taking this issue very seriously. I will report back to the House. Before we proceed with business today, I want to address a very serious and grave incident that occurred during a division yesterday afternoon. I thank the Leader of the House for raising this incident with me at the time. After the bells had been rung, I ordered that the doors be locked. After I gave this order, I'm aware that a number of members exited the chamber while one of the attendants was attempting to close and lock the door to the opposition lobby as directed. As all members are aware, under Standing Order 129, after the Speaker orders the doors to be locked, no member may enter or leave the chamber until after the division. It does not matter whether the doors have been able to be fully closed. The point at which the order is given from the chair is the point at which no member is allowed to enter or leave the chamber. The most serious aspect of this incident is that members physically push their way past the attendant to get out of the chamber, resulting in them getting hit in the doorframe and hurting their arm. I am particularly disgusted by this behaviour and I will not tolerate it. For a staff member of this place to be treated in this way when they are simply doing their job is disrespectful and a very serious matter. I have spoken to the parliamentary staff who are involved or observed this incident and have reviewed a written report from them. I want to make it clear that I am committed to ensuring that this building and this chamber are safe and respectful places of work for all. No staff member should be hurt in the course of doing their work in service of this House. We all know that members are busy, and however, I'm sure we would all agree that no member's time is worth more than a staff member's safety. In light of this issue and other recent issues raised with me, I'll be writing to all members with a review to, to reinforce this and to ensure that members are in no doubt as to their obligations to treat this chamber and parliamentary staff with respect. The Australian people expect members to maintain the highest of standards in terms of conduct and behaviour. And we have been reminded of this in the set the standard report into Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces. For all members and staff, I'll remind them the Parliamentary Workplace Support Service, the PWSS, supports people affected by serious incidents or misconduct in the parliamentary workplace. This service is available at all hours. I'm now going to give indulgence to members who left the chamber follow my order to lock the doors to apologise to the House for their actions. I give the call to the Honourable Member for Wannan. Uh, Speaker, I left the House as you were saying close, close the doors and I apologise for my conduct. I thank the member. I give the call to the member for Hume. Uh, I apologise to the House Speaker for leaving the House after your directions were given. Give the call to the member for Wide Bay. Uh, Mr Speaker, I unreservedly apologise to the House uh, and yourself for, for leaving uh, after your direction yesterday. 
And uh, I also uh, apologise to the staff if they were involved in this. Our staff here in the chamber do an incredible job, and one of them is not crowd control. And uh, I apologise to them for that. I thank the member. Give the call to the member for Fairfax. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I too unreservedly apologise to the House. Give the call to the honourable member for Flinders. I apologise to the House and the Speaker for seeking to leave after the Speaker had ordered that the doors be closed. I deeply regret and apologise for any impact caused to a staff member involved. Give the call to the member for Nichols. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, uh, I sought to leave uh, the House after your um, order, and I unreservedly apologise to you and to the House for that. And I have offered uh, the apology to the attendant who was on the door at the time. I thank the member. Give the call to the member for Canning. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also apologise unreservedly to you and the House for attempting to leave after the doors were uh, to be locked, and I particularly uh, regret uh, any. Uh, issues with the staff member involved, and I apologise uh, to her unreservedly. Thank you. We shall now move on with the business of the day.